These are nothing but the structures that help in fastening one cell to another. That is the help in binding of the cells and keep them together. Either one cell to another or the cells to their basement membrane. Both of these will require some junctions and some fittings. They are just like the nuts and bolts which help in keeping the doors together. These are the junctions. So, their function however is the help in the communication and transport of various substances between the cells and most frequently they are found in epithelial cells. Now, there are three types of junctions. They are the first one is your tight junctions, second one is anchoring junctions, third one is gap junctions. Okay. However, Anchoring junctions has three types, adherence, desmosomes and the hemidesmosomes, right. Now, it is further classified based on the junctional attachment that is where it is helping in the attachment whether it is the cell to cell type or cell to basement membrane type. Coming to cell to cell type, the junctions which help in cell to cell junctions are zonular adherence, desmosomes, tight junctions and gap junctions. However, the junctions which bind the cell to the basement membrane, these are the hemidesmosomes, the cell adhesion molecules, the cadherins, the integrins and the selectins. These are the ones that bind the cells to their basement membrane. Just a quick illustration of how the various junctions look. This is how a tight junction appears. These are the desmosomes and the next one is your gap junction. Okay, This is a gap junction. Right. Now, let us look at tight junction. This is also known as zona occludens and by the name itself you can understand that they seal the adjacent epithelial cells to each other tightly beneath their apical surface, right? They form a rope like tight connection, they are so tight. They, they adhere both the, epithel the adjacent epithelial cells to each other. So, if this is the apical membrane of the cell, see where the um, tight junction is located, it should be located just beneath the apical surface, right? So, this is your tight junction just beneath the apical surface surface it is binding this cell to this cell right. So, its components are occludins, junctional adhesion molecules and claudins. It is made up of these three components occludins, junctional adhesion molecules and claudins. Mostly seen in the epithelial cells of blood brain barrier. You know how specific the blood brain barrier is permeable to right. Only a few substances can enter. So, it is important there to have a tight junction. Also, another location is intestinal mucosa, renal tubules and also the choroidal plexus. Right. Now, the function is it regulates paracellular movement that is side to side movement of substances from one cell to another and prevents molecular and ion passage. It prevents molecular and ion passage and regulates side to side or paracellular movement. And it also helps in maintaining the cellular polarity and you can understand because it is so tight it does not allow any leakage between the cells, right. These are the functions of tight junctions. And let us look at gap junctions. These are intracellular connections of 3 nanometer diameter. We have seen the tight junctions are present in the central nervous system and the GIT and the choroidal plexus. These are present in the heart, CVS, especially in the intercalated discs and also in smooth muscles and a few are present in neurons as well. The most important location of gap junction is the intercalated discs of the heart. And the components, see it is important to remember, it is it has 6 transmembrane proteins called connexons which are in the shape of a donut. 
if you look at the picture you will understand so if this is your gap junction you enlarge it this is how a connexon looks these are the six transmembrane proteins which are shaped like a donut this uh, complex is called the connexon okay what is the function of gap, uh, gap junction it conducts the ionic current and permits membrane potential to pass from cell to cell it's because they are present in neurons you can understand it helps in uh, passage of membrane potential from one cell to another by helping in conduction of ionic currents also they permit free passage of ions glucose and amino acids unlike tight junctions it gives a free passage and however one important point you have to remember here is it does not allow the passage of proteins okay that is about gap junction also known as nexus now let's look at zona adherence desmosomes and hemidesmosomes zona adherence is attached to actin okay that's all you have to remember adherence a actin a okay now desmosomes these are localized patches in cell membrane between two cells and which hold them tightly together right these are localized passages in cell membrane they are attached to intermediate filaments and they are seen in heart skin and uterine cervix so desmosomes are present in the heart skin and the uterine cervix and hemidesmosomes they help in attaching epithelial cells to the connective tissue that is the basal lamina